we started talking about the bees and biosecurity because it was just after the, the 11, uh, September events. And he's the guy who brought me to Wikipedia. It was totally unknown at that time. Now it, people take it for granted because it's, well, some people didn't know about that. It's 250 languages, and that's not translation. That's content being done by the people in their own language. But they take it for granted because we have over 250 million unique visitors per month. Yeah, there is no more Britannica, basically. Uh, but at that time, it was very, very small. It was in English only, and it was essentially edited by American people. I joined there, and I wanted to reflect on two things that happened to me in the f very few, few, uh, the first few months I was there. The first is that even though people joined there uh, and self-organized to build content, have fun together, and build the resources that could be helpful for everyone on the planet, and believe very strongly that even if we are different, uh, and if nobody knows everything, everybody knows something. And they want to allow people to participate and bring information. Even though we talk about love and sharing and all these things, the truth is we also fight a lot. And one of the first pages I went to with a big fight was the global warming page. Because back in 2002, people uh, very strongly disagree uh, not only about the reason why there was global warming, but also basically because is there a global warming or not? And there were people contributing there from the United States and from France and from uh, South Africa, I remember. There were scientific, there were politicians, there were people from different backgrounds. And the problem was to succeed to have all of them together, not bring uh, 20 experience one next to each other, uh, but to have everything built in one unique articles, which would be updated, complete, accurate, factual, and neutral. Because what we wanted to do was not to push people to believe something or to have certain understanding of things. We wanted just to provide neutral information on, upon which they would be able to uh, create their own opinion and move on all by themselves. And that was... Um, uh, we were talking about peace early on, and I think uh, even if that's not the goal of Wikipedia, maybe one of the first benefits is having all these people together trying to work toward one thing, one project, one goal, all together is, is a wonderful uh, participation in the peace process. Because they learn they are different, they think different, uh, and we don't ask them to agree on things. We just ask them to build something together up in which they can say, okay, that's fair and I can live with what is being done. And that was my first experience with the big heat that was on Wikipedia. And the second experience was about beekeeping. I was working with uh, several chemist industry at that time, so I knew quite a lot about what was going on. And in Europe, we were deep into legal fight upon who was responsible for the, bee the bees dying. So it was pretty much advanced, largely in France and Germany. So every information on the topic was in French and in German, and that was it, just because we're countries with a lot of agriculture. And I went on Wikipedia and found an article in English about beekeeping, a, very, a really great article being written by a beekeeper. So I added the conflict that was going on in Europe. And the American beekeeper came to me and said, what's that stuff you're talking about? Where does it come from? I said, well, you know, it's happening right now. There are some lawsuits and everything. I said, I never heard about that. But as a beekeeper, recently we have started talking together about a problem related to bees. And we had no idea that was going on in Europe. And when I asked to Europeans, they said they don't have the problem in the U.S. No one had any idea of what was going on on either side of the ocean. And for the first time ever, we could uh, grab all these people and make them work together toward understanding what was going on. And simply, simply collecting the information from various places helped moving towards more understanding uh, of the various reasons why bees were dying and maybe moving towards more solutions. And that was the, the two things I learned in particular from working with these people on Wikipedia. But information can be manipulated, right? Of course. And so it, it could g give the wrong impression. What, uh, it can what be manipulated by absolutely anyone. It can okay. be manipulated by citizens or government or public institutions, whoever can 
try are there to stops push. put in place checks and stops put in place to avoid having information that is uh, not uh, not correct or suspect well the big difference is that uh, the entire uh, creation system uh, is completely transparent since everything is happening on the internet itself and that's also true for Facebook or Twitter or wherever we can see what is going on and people can uh, compare the sources, compare the data coming in and, and reflect and comment and criticize very strongly and they have the same amount of uh, as soon as they come with arguments and facts and sources, they have the same way than any other citizens. So the, the entire system is self-correcting. Mr. Desai, the question of credibility is a very big one. And what's more important is that what do people choose to believe? What medium do they choose to believe more? And I'm sure that varies from one country to the next, from one part of the world to the other. Uh, can I also just comment a bit on what Don was also saying and perhaps begin with a sort of I would describe as a peasant's eye view. If I'm a farmer out there in India in a drought prone area, how much of this is going to affect me? Uh, I would say uh, it will, but not through these routes. What's going to really profoundly change the role of the Internet in the areas that we are working in is mobile telephony and mobile access. Ten times many, I mean, as many people in India have mobile phones as they have access to computers. And with 3G, that is access. Second, you have to reach that person in a form in which that person understands. Language is a big issue. It's not an English language. The majority of the users of the Internet are not English speaking. Third, you have to reach him in a form which may quite often be illiterate. It may be in the form of voice. There's a wonderful program which is going on right now in India where a farmer can pick up a phone, he rings up his query, it gets translated by a voice into a text software, and then gets channeled through the internet to an appropriate expert who replies, and it gets back to the farmer again as a voice message, something which he uh, uh, understands. So I think the web which is really going to make a difference is not the web of Facebook and Twitter. It's the web which is going to deliver genuine information and services to people through the media that they can afford, which is most probably going to be the mobile phone. Second, I have credibility. I told you about the survey which was done about three years ago. I mean, let's face it, there's an incredible amount of junk which floats around in the web. And there is a serious problem of credibility of the information that I get from the web. And about three years ago, a survey was done and on what do people trust, a quick survey, the results of that survey. First, in developing countries, people trust the media more than they trust the government for information. Surprisingly so, in, the, in, in developed countries, it's not quite that. It's more or less balanced. I suspect it will be a little different now. This was done three years ago. I, my guess is the answers may be a little different. Amongst the media, the top is still was national television, followed by national newspapers, etc., etc., and internet-based information was last. And when our people were asked about trust and distrust, that was the one where it was completely balanced. And uh, there, are, there are serious issues of do people really believe what they get from the net, or do they believe uh, 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 the credibility of what comes out. And this is where something which I haven't mentioned, there is no process of verification. When I run a print newspaper, I have to have two sources for everything. I have a process of fact verification. One of the weaknesses, not just of the internet, but also of 24-7 television, is the processes of verification are very, very poor. So I would say that really the, cha the challenge before us in terms of new media is to see how we raise its credibility, to see how we use it in a manner in which it actually reaches people uh, rather than uh, in the form in which people can use it for genuine information. Uh, the third thing that I want to say is something which I fully agree with, Don, that the greatest single contribution of this is the possibility of collaboration that it provides. It has already proved its worth as an instrument of political mobilization. And many of the examples that we have heard today have been essentially examples of political mobilization for protests. 